Yes, sorry, my apologies, everybody. Yes, I'm back now. All right, uh, as I said earlier, my, my flour is now around 60 grams. I've got 3.5 teaspoons full of cocoa powder. I've got um, two teaspoons of salt. I've got um, 750 grams of sugar. 750 grams of butter. I'm going to be using four teaspoons of vanilla extract. I've got eggs here. My eggs are 16. I've got them separated into egg white and egg yolk. And of course, I've got my buttermilk, which is 643 mils of buttermilk. And I'm going to be using white vinegar, white wine vinegar. I'm going to be using three, uh, three teaspoons full of that. This cocoa powder, I'm not sure if I said teaspoon, is actually 3.5 tablespoonful of um, cocoa powder. So what I'm going to be doing now at this stage is that I'm going to be pouring my salt, my cocoa powder, and my baking powder. I'm not sure, is this all baking powder? And my baking powder into my um, flour, and I'll be whisking them together to incorporate them all together. And so to let you know, I have already sifted my flour before I came on live. I've already sifted my flour before, my, before I came on live. So my flour is um, plain flour. I've got, again, I repeat, 960 grams of plain flour in here. I've added my cocoa powder, which is um, 3.5 tablespoons full of cake, cocoa powder. I have added my salt, which is two teaspoons of salt. And I've also added my baking powder and that is um, 3.5 teaspoon of full of baking powder. That's, all that, that's what I have in here. And of course, I have my buttermilk, 643 mils, and my butter and my uh, ice and uh, my castor sugar. I will now move on to, my, to the side where my mixer is and begin to mix. So I'll see you in a bit. My husband is coming in. Oh, what does he want? Hi, honey. What's up? I'm live. Why are you interrupting my live call? I'm alright. Okay. Are you going to talk? No, no, I'm out. I'm out. Well, it's not going well as a plan, Gary. I mean, the technical stuff that has to be said to be so annoying. <laughs> yes, so I don't know that so you didn't want to go like. <laughs> anyway, go and get on my phone. Oh, I thought you would have been there since now. No, I'm ready to go. Okay. Yeah, you said. Okay. All right, bye. Hello again. Sorry, I got cut off because I received a call from my husband. Now we are still live, and now I'm not taking my camera to my mixer sections. So I have my um, 750 grams of uh, caster sugar and my 750 grams of butter. So I'm going to now begin to mix them together and begin the baking process. Meanwhile, before I had already preheated my oven to gas mark number three, and I believe that's about 100, what's the equivalent of gas mark three? Mm -hmm. 
in um, centigrade. I've got my sister, my daughter, Chloe. She's in the background assisting with stuff. So, 160, are you sure? Let me see. No, I think Yeah, that's not too. Try that's not too. So I'll be mixing for at least I'll be mixing for at least uh, seven minutes to start with. Alexa, what is it? This is Sunshine right now. Now it's all again. I think it's amazing. I'm Alexa, what is it? Yes, I'm playing music. Hello, I'm Sunshine. I'm Sunshine. I'm playing music. Alexa, what is it? Yes, I'm playing music. Hello, I'm Sunshine. I'm playing music. Hello, Baking, I mean, as you're mixing, you're wiping down your bowl to ensure that all aspects of your baking is um, being mixed. My apologies if my life is not going as planned. My third time of doing live on Instagram, and actually, my first time of actually being through the other one, we're just testing, testing, testing.
Hello, everybody. that your uh, mix is fluffy, your butter and your as a sugar is as fluffy as possible and that your butter which is originally yellow or yellowish in color has um, turned white. I'm getting to that stage now. This should this process should normally take about 10 to about 7 to 10 minutes. This process of mixing to ensure your butter and your sugar is properly mixed, properly aired. That means air is properly incorporated into it and it is fluffy. So remember to always um, scrape down your bowl as you go along. That is very, very important. This ensures that all aspects of your baking is captured. All as, oh, sorry, all aspects of your mixture is captured and there is no one that is not mixed and another one not uh, properly mixed. So that's the whole idea. So we continue again. My lighting may not be doing it justice, but uh, as you can see, it's fluffy. You can see it. It is fluffy. The sugar and the butter are properly mixed. Uh, and it's now getting to like whitish stuff. You can see it's almost white. So the, but the butter is no longer yellow or yellowish. This means that you're almost at the right consistency where you need your bake to be. Again, if you have me, if you're just joining, I am baking red velvet, red, red velvet cake. I am using my, uh, 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 one of the recipe I use. This recipe is butter based. So I know there are a lot of recipes out there that requires that I want an oil base. However, I am this recipe is butter based. So. I'm using butter for this. I'm not using oil. And it is uh, my go-to. Even the butter-based recipe, there's a number of them out there. However, this is one I, you know, moderated myself. You know, when I mean moderated, I, 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 I treat it to my taste and my desire. And uh, since uh, my clients have loved it. So I'm going to, again, mix it again. <laughs> satisfied with the consistency of my butter and my sugar, my pasta sugar. So it is at the right consistency I want it to be. Um, 
If you want the recipe, I mentioned it earlier at the start of this uh, video, even though I was having a lot of technical difficulty. That's no excuse with the learning process. However, if you want it, I mentioned the, the list of recipe at the start of this program or this video, this, this live streaming. If you want the recipe, I can always share with you. You can comment down below and I will do well to give to send them to you. Uh, this recipe is a very large one because I'm creating a large cake. This um, one of the cakes I'm creating is uh, that. So I will be, I'll be. You can you can split it into two when you want to make yours to fit your purpose. You can split it, split it into three. You can split it into four. Now at this stage, I am now adding my red food coloring. I usually add my red food coloring at this stage in order to allow the red food coloring to properly incorporate into the mixture before i add my flour if you're a big hand you're watching me you would know that it is bad practice to over mix your flour and because i require this um, red food coloring to properly incorporate into my mixture and i did it at this stage to do that so that by the time my flour is added i won't need to mix too much i usually use um Sugar flare colors red extra. I I get it on the internet either for vanilla. I think it's vanilla valley. Yes, vanilla valley. Or sometimes I get it from Amazon. So you can just do a search. I am putting just roughly about um, two tablespoons full of this uh, red food coloring into my butter at this stage, and then I'll see how it turns out. This is just about. Two tablespoon, sorry, two teaspoonful of red food coloring paste, and then I go ahead and mix. It is pink, so that means there's not enough to cover all that. A little usually goes a long way, so I don't put them all at once. I put them a little bit at a time. So at the moment, I'll just simply add a, like a couple of teaspoons full of my red food coloring, red extra paste. I'm going to mix it again, because I can still see some red patches that are not fully incorporated. my mixture looks like at the moment it is not all red but is it's getting there you see yep 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 okay i'm going to, need to add more red food color with this mixture again i'm adding an additional about an additional one teaspoon full adding at the moment i'll show you in a bit but i just need to scrape down my bowl to make sure that all the spread is captured my daughter doesn't want to show in the camera i don't know what i've done to her she's on her phone
Right. And then, uh, because it's a large portion I am creating, so this is about a total of four teaspoonful of red food coloring. So I'm discarding this now because I'm not going to use it again. So that's why I'm scraping it on the mixer attachment. That one done. That's one thing about working with food color. You can mess up your hand if you're not happy. Anyway, just to let you know before, I'm not sure if I said it before I started the live. A blessing, DM. Hello. Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. My name is Olua Kelly Osege. I am breaking live today on Instagram. I am making red velvet cake in a large quantity. I said earlier, the recipes I'm using are the measurements. So if you missed it, you feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to do it. I have just added my red food coloring. I add it at this stage to allow the red food coloring to properly incorporate into my mixture before I add my flour so that I do not have to over mix my flour. And you know, if you're watching me as a baker, you know, over mixing um, uh, your flour is very, very bad business. I'm, I'm sure you know that. So when I'm making any food that has any baking um, recipe but that, ha that has a food color to be added onto it, I, u I usually add it during my the mixture of my butter and my sugar stage so that the color is properly incorporated into the mixture before I add my flour. So I have added my food coloring. I had added a total of four teaspoonful and you can see my mixture is red. I'm not sure if the camera is doing it justice but it is red. It is not actually easy going live, you see. I didn't know it was so I didn't know it was gonna be so technically challenging like this. So I think at this stage I am very, very satisfied Chloe and Tiana is outside. I am very, very satisfied with my mixture at the moment. I will now be adding my vanilla extract. The vanilla extract. If you're getting good one, you know how expensive they are. I will be using four teaspoons into this recipe. Hello, madame. I've got a busy talk. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I'm not going to do that. I don't put it to the I'm going to add a little bit. As you can see, I have forgot my egg yolk in here. In my baking, especially my sponge cakes, I do not mix. I do not add my eggs in the home. I separate my egg yolks from my egg white. And I use them at different stages of the process. So I will show you what I'm going to do with my egg white. But at this stage, I will be adding my egg yolk. One yolk at a time. Slowly. Oops. 
Hello, if you're joining me for the first time, thank you. I'm just baking live. Okay, at this stage now, all my eggs are fully added in the mixture. Oh, my, my mixture is looking so beautifully red. I'm just going to mix it a bit. To allow it to let everything make sure that every side, sorry, I'm just going to spread that the bowl to ensure that every side is properly incorporated. So you can see my mixture is very, very red. I'm not sure if my camera is doing it justice, but let's see that it's fair. to the very very most important aspect of the process i term it as very most important or the most important aspect is that of the process is that it is important to get the segment right because if you don't it's going to affect the texture of your cake so i will show you what i'm going to be adding shortly So that's my buttermilk, and that's my flour. So I'll be adding them in alternative, alternative format. So I'll be adding that now to my mixture. Okay. 
ensuring that I am not over mixing my flour. So I'll be, in this flour, as I stated at the start of the video, I mean, you've left streaming, I already added, it is plain flour, and I've already added my baking powder, I added my uh, salt, and also my cocoa powder. My bicarbonate of soda is not in here yet. So I'll be adding this mixture into my, sorry, this, uh, my flour into my mixture, and then mix a bit at a very, very low speed. My, 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 um, my mixer guard, I'm not comfortable using it, so I don't have it to, to use at the moment. So you have to mix as gently as you can. And then add a part of your buttermilk. So you're alternating the wet ingredients and the um, um, dry ingredients. This is to ensure that it is all properly uh, incorporated and then you're not over mixing the flour. Again, I'll be adding the last portion of my flour. I'm mixing as slow as I can. At this stage, I'll be scraping down the side. That's some dry and wet ingredients on the sides of my bowl. This is to ensure that every aspect of this mixture is captured. I have stated earlier that I have preheated my oven to gas mark number three. Actually, I've reduced it to two point five. So I'm going to be adding another portion of my buttermilk. Again, mix. So I am alternating my dry and wet ingredients at this stage. that you're mixing at a very low speed so that you do not, this is so that you do not overbeat your flour. I'm adding the last portion of my wet ingredients, which is my buttermilk. It is very, very important that you do not overbeat your flour. This is a very large portion of um, recipe ingredients. So I'm just now scraping the sides to ensure all the sides, all aspects of my mixture is captured. And now I'll be adding the final portion of my dry ingredient, which is my flour, baking powder, salt, and um, cocoa powder. Again, I'm scraping the sides. To ensure everything is captured. Mm. 
My uh, mixture is a bit thick at the moment. That is because I haven't added my egg whites yet. I will show you what I'm going to do with my egg whites in a moment. So I'm now just going to mix it for a few more seconds, like a few more bits, and I'm done with this mixer. And the remainder of the process will be continued with my spatula. So that's it at this stage. I'm now going to remove this spatula. I mean, sorry, the uh, bitter. I'm just scraping the bit that is on my uh, what's it called? What's this attachment called again? I've forgotten it. On my mixer attachment, it, it has a particular name. Uh, the bitter is it bitter? No, no, it's the one that's making bread as a bitter, isn't it? Hello, chat me up, chat me up, ask me questions. If you have any questions to ask, I'll be happy to answer them. And the next process will be concluded the table. I'm just washing my hands. Hands. Give me a moment. I wash my hands. I don't know how many times when I'm baking. Several times. I'm washing my hands at this stage. So now that's done for this aspect. I will show you the next stage of the process. At this point in time, I'm now going to attach my whisk attachment. So messy now. When you're baking, there's a lot of mess that goes around. This is my 16 egg wax. I'm now going to whisk.
Now it's whisked into, uh, I think, mid pig. So I'll be folding that into my recipe. As gently as I can. Baking. This process is very, very messy. So, do you bear with me? I am folding it into my batter. A little at a time, or a bit at a time, not at the same time. If you're making a small portion, you can add them all at a go. But because this is a very large portion, I am adding a little at a time. Yes, as I said, and this is a very large um, uh, recipe, large measurement. So. I'm simply folding my egg whites into my butter as slow and as careful as I can. If it was a smaller recipe, it would be easier to do, but and quicker. But I just have to take my time with this one. And the final batch of egg whites. Chloe. Yeah. If I was using oil for my red velvet cake instead of butter, it would be a bit watery than this. I don't want, I'm not making. My my rubber, this particular recipe is going to be um, moist and at the same time fluffy. That is why I go through all this process to get the perfect, the perfect, the perfect texture, the perfect taste, and the perfect um, result for my bake. And so far, I've had the feedback that are excellent. So this is a large recipe. If you want a smaller portion, or you can divide it into um, two, three, four, through. And then you can get your own smaller recipe. With this recipe, I multiplied times, I think times four, because um, my original recipe was based on a 24 um, cupcake measurement. But I am going to be using an 8 inch round for this recipe and then 3 7 inches round. I'm mean, sorry, I'm going to be a 10 inch round thing and 3 7 inches round thing for this one. And possibly a couple of cake loaves depending on how high I want it to be. 
So my uh, egg whites is properly incorporated. You can see the color of my red velvet is all even. There is no one that's too dark. There's no segment that is too light. This is because I ensure that I mix my um, icing sheet, my, my um, what do you call it? My red food coloring at the mixing or the, uh, the creaming stage. I'm just going to put that in the bin. So I've got my things lined up. That's my 10 inches team and my three. See, that's my mixture. So I'm not going to be pouring that. You can see it's a bit watery now. I don't weigh my things anymore. I just gauge uh, with my eyes. Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm just making sure that everything is as equal as possible. I do not measure my teens anymore. I just simply gauge with my eyes. The experience I've learned to gauge with my eyes, and most often than not, I, I always have the same measurement in uh, the different teens. However, with the 10 inch teen, I don't have to worry about that because I'm only using one anyway. I have already mixed my uh, Heated, preheated my oven to gas mark 2.5, 2.5 degree, I mean 2.5 gas mark, and I think that's about 140 uh, degree centigrade. In the, in the first instance, I will allow it to bake for about an hour because I will now be checking to see, because I'll be, one of them will be, some of them will be at the bottom rack. I'm just trying to create some sort of a dam in between. Understand that assists your cake to bake out even when it comes out. I've tried it and it works, really. So as best as I can, I'm trying to create a dam in the center of my cake. I don't like waste, so I try as much as possible to get rid of every portion of the batter as best as I can. Washing my hands again.
Yes, so at this stage, I'm just going to tap my face. This is to get rid of air bubbles in your butter so that when your cakes come out and they're fully baked, there will be no holes in the, in the, uh, in the cake um, sponges. So that's my mixture done. I'm now going to put all this in the oven to bake for at least on the first instance an hour. Sorry, I'm just cleaning up all this mess here. Let me clean the foot. Yes, it's messy. The keys, it's messy. So I'm going to put it in the, in the, in the oven for in the first instance an hour, then um, swap it because some of them will be at the top rack and the two of them will be at the bottom rack. Swap it to allow uh, more uh, even baking. Okay, thank you so much. Just bear me a moment. Let me put this in the oven. for one hour's time from now. One hour, starting now. Yeah, that's my cake. Pop in the oven. So thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me live. Thank you, thank you ever so much. If you join me live, thank you. Yes, it was a hectic live because it wasn't easy trying to set up. I didn't know it was going to be that challenging, that, that difficult, but it was. <laughs> At least I hope I learned from this one and then can get better for next time I join the live. Thank you so much for being here with me and I hope you're having a relaxing uh, start day, start of the first day of the week or the first day of the start of the week. Hope you have today. Yes, yeah, Sunday is always the first day of the start of the week, even though the um, first day of the working week is Monday, but the start of the week is actually Sunday. So I hope you're having a wonderful start to the week and uh, in preparation for um, a, a productive week ahead. Thank you for joining me live and uh, I look forward to 